Hello, uh, this is uh, Games Without Dice or Cards, Combinatorial Game Theory. I'm Tom Morley. So let's start by jumping into the water head first, and let's play a game. Let me first introduce you to our two players. Our two players are called left and right. These two players alternate. One goes, one, the other one makes a move, then the first one makes a move, then the other one makes a move. Uh, typically, left is associated with the color blue, and you can remember that because there's an L in blue. And right is associated with red, and you can remember that because there's an R in red. Now, these players are going to alternate. Alternate play. And the first one that can't move loses. So there's no, no ties. At each stage in the game, there'll be various moves available to one player or the other player, or perhaps both. And whoever runs out of moves loses. So let's take a look, a look at something like this. And let's start with a little horsey. OK. So this is a game called Hackenbush. Well, it's a particular position in the game called Hackenbush. And you can start in various ways. But we start with this little horsey. Uh, the two players, red and blue, left and right, take turns, and what they do is cut one of their edges of their own color. So if blue starts, he could cut this edge, and that edge is no longer there. Now, these, these edges have helium in them, so, uh, and they're attached to the ground here, which is green. So uh, if something gets disconnected from the ground, it floats off and is not available to either player. So for instance, uh, maybe right goes here. Um, maybe left goes here. Now at this point, this whole piece here uh, is still connected to the ground. But once right moves, it all floats up, and now left moves, and there's no moves left for left. Okay, so, so whenever the two players alternate, left cuts blue edges, right cuts red edges. Any edge that's either cut or no longer connected to the ground, to where the nutrients are, the nitrogen and the water and whatever, uh, any edge that's no longer connected to the ground floats off and is not available to either player. When a player has no edges to cut, the game ends, that player loses. Okay. We'll see a lot of examples uh, in terms of hack and bush as, as the game goes on. Let's take a look at some very simple uh, uh, positions in hack and bush. Here's the ground. It's green. And now we go, I don't know, blue and blue and maybe a red in between. Um, and maybe a red, and then say a blue on top. Uh, now, uh, it's okay that these aren't connected, but they're connected to the ground, so that's okay. So they're there. Um, maybe, maybe red goes first, and red says, aha, I'm going to cut this. And now these float off. And that top blue edge is no longer available for blue. Blue say, what's the best move for blue? I don't know offhand. But blue might cut this. And then red cuts this. And then blue cuts this. And now red loses. So that's how that works. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at various variations of this where we start with, with, with more complicated pictures and, and try to analyze in terms of, of who, who wins. If left goes first, who wins if right goes first? OK, let's take a look at another class of games. Uh, and uh, 
This is a class of games that, uh, with pl all played with coins. In this case, uh, the coins are pennies and uh, dimes, but uh, and maybe right is pennies because the, the copper in pennies, although there's very little copper actually in pennies, uh, looks kind of red. Uh, and then the dimes, say, are, uh, are left. Now, uh, both players push coins to the left uh, in the direction of, of that. And the three games push, shove, and run over uh, to have slightly different rules. Now, you can, you, can, you can push a coin off the edge, off the end, and if it's off the end, it's no longer in play. So the two players alternate, pushing one coin to the left, one space. Uh, and let's look, at, um, let's look at, say, this position here. Uh, in push, that's the first game, if left pushes this coin over, uh, this, this coin over one, then that pushes also that, the, the coin next to it over. So that's, that's called push. In, in, in shove, when you push a coin over, everything to the left moves over one space also. So in shove, this, this, this coin over here gets uh, thrown off the cliff here. In run over, what happens is when you push, say, this coin over here, one to the left, you run over that person and uh, that, that coin disappears from play. So uh, there, you can look at uh, longer positions to start with, different relations of coins uh, on the thing. I think it's not too hard to show whoever has the rightmost coin will win the game, but, but if we have several of these going at once, then, then things get a little bit more complicated. And still, what we want to do, even if we know who's, who's, who wins the game, what's, what's the best play maybe to, to delay going off the cliff as long as possible. So, so here's uh, four games to play with. And I urge you to, to start with pictures like this. Uh, f find someone to play. The two, find, figure out whether you want to be left or right. Doesn't matter. Uh, draw a picture like this and go play some games. Uh, get some coins out. Draw pictures like this. Play several of these at once. And we'll explain uh, as the course goes by how to do that more carefully and, and see, what, uh, see what it looks like good moves and see what looks like bad moves. So uh, there are some games to start with. And uh, let's continue next time.